Today we're going to talk about how to encourage yourself in the times that we are in. How to encourage yourself in the times that we are in. This is a time that you don't need somebody outside to encourage you and also when people are out to discourage you, you have to know how to encourage yourself. So I give you the definition of uh, encouragement is uh, the action of giving someone support, confidence, and hope. Except that in this case, you are to encourage yourself with hope. You have to give yourself encouragement and you have to support yourself with the Word of God. Because uh, when it comes to having hope, one of the things that we are very blessed to be is that we are children of the living God. And as a child of God, you, the Bible says you're not one of those who have no hope in this world. You have hope, so you have to know how to apply it. Because hope works with faith. This is why the definition of faith really is uh, based on hope. It says, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things not seen. Oh, if, sorry. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things you are hoping for and the things you haven't yet seen. In other words, it is something that you do not see, but you are assured that you're going to receive it. So this is what the Word of God does for you when you go in there to encourage yourself. Meaning that God will do something even though you don't see it. It doesn't uh, seem to make sense. But we are told in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 that all things, God is working all things together for our good because we love Him. So, this is a hope that even when things seem not going your way, always remember who you are. That when it's all said and done, the Lord said, What does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? So, you have to really encourage yourself with the fact that you have eternal life and you are born again, you are heaven bound, and you are above only and not beneath. And so, do not cast yourself or let somebody cast you down. Don't cast yourself down. You know, but we are encouraged in uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 23. It says, continue in faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. That's what I'm saying. The gospel, the message of salvation. That's able to bring you joy in the midst of whatever you're dealing with. That's able to give you hope knowing that the person that you belong to, your God will always, always have you in the palm of his hands. He will never drop you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So you have to continue in the hope of the gospel. It says, which ye have heard which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. This is why we have hope. If you have received the gospel and you're not one of those who rejected it or cast it aside or behind you, the Bible says you have hope. As long as you belong to the Lord Jesus, you have hope. And you know that we do not place our hope on a man, but on the living God who loved us so much that he came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us. He went on the cross for us, died and rose again, gave us eternal life and stepped back into his Godhood. This is the person whose hope we, play, uh, we, we have as an anchor of our soul and we place our hope in him because he is our very hope. The Bible says that he is the hope of every man. So now, the scripture tells us that uh, we, should not, we should not put our trust in the arm of flesh. Because actually there is a curse 
on those who put their trust in the arm of flesh. The Bible says, when you put your, your hope and your trust in another person, it's saying you will not see good when it comes. You know, so this is why you must always remember that your hope is in, uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, the Bible warns us, the scriptures tells us that uh, really at the time that we are in, he said many will not care for the things of God. They will be lovers of themselves. Some of them, even in the church, having the form of godliness, and but denying the power thereof. You know, so you have to know that even in the midst of so Christians, you don't let anybody discourage you in the name of Christianity. You have to let the scriptures encourage you and make sure that your hope is in the Lord Jesus because he is the one that is our hope. He is the one that has promised us the hope of eternal life that we have already in us right now. And we are hoping, very well assured, that he's coming back to receive us unto his, himself as he promised. This is why Hebrews uh, 11, I mean Hebrews 6 verse 11 to uh, 19, you really have to uh, encourage yourself with these scriptures in Hebrews because we are going to learn that God in order to assure us of where our hope should be, he, he swore by himself because there was nothing greater for him to swear. God swore by himself. So this is who our hope is based on. The God who swore by himself concerning his promises to us in his son through Abraham. So let's read it. Again, Hebrews chapter 6 verses 11 to 19. He says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. See where hope comes in again? Full assurance of hope unto the end. That ye be not slothful, but follower, followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promise. For when God made the promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you. See, this is what I just told you, that God wanted us to be sure. He wanted our faith and our hope in him to be assured, so he swore by himself that he would not break his promise, that he would fulfill what he said to Abraham and to his seed, which is Christ and those in Christ. And in verse 15, he says, And so, after he had patiently endured, meaning Abraham, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for a confirmation to them is to them the end of all strife. In other words, Remember in the old time, they go like, once people shake on it, it's a done deal. Unlike now that people give you a contract that's supposed to be a good deal, but they put a little fine print to take away whatever they agree to do for you if you don't read the fine print. Our God is not like that. He is sure and he swore and he promised and he does what he promised. If you don't believe it, go and look in the Bible. Every promise that was set, made, that he made concerning his son, we have fulfilled to the T. And again, since he left, everything that he said will happen. Take a look at our world today. Take a look at it. And you will see that we're literally walking in what the Bible says. You know? So, in verse 18... Uh, verse 17, rather, it says, uh, Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. God wanted us to know that his word will never change. So he, he, he introduced an oath by swearing by himself. And you should see when God makes an oath. This is God the Father. When he makes an oath 
and swore by himself when I saw him. And he was sitting there talking to me. And then all of a sudden he said, oh, and he got up and he swore by himself. He pounded his chest and then he lifted his finger and swore. Pointed to me as he uh, declared what he was going to do. You know, so God is faithful. You know, so in verse 18 it says uh, that by two uh, immutable things in which it is impossible, rather in which it was impossible for God to lie, that we might, be a, uh, we might have a strong consolation who have fled from the uh, refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So the hope set before us is a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And everything in him, because the Bible says that in him all things consist. He pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So everything that we ever need, that we're ever going to need, is in Christ. You need encouragement, it's in Christ. You need joy, it's in Christ. You need hope, it's in Christ. You need uh, faith, it's in Christ. Anything, health, in Christ. Protection, provision, refuge, in Christ. That's why he said, he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, he said, I'll do it. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he said, he'll give it to you. You know? So then he tells us, he says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. See? This is why I told you that if you're born again, you have hope. Because the hope is a person, an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. And, with, and which enter it into that within the veil. Only the Lord Jesus Christ goes uh, into the, uh, beyond the veil. And he takes us who are in him with him. Otherwise, nobody else can get into uh, the, the place, the Holy of Holies, where God the Father dwells. You know? So, we have a hope. We have an anchor. And we, are, we should not be moved by what we see and what we hear and what is going on. We should remember that first we are Christians. Then we are human beings. Then we are citizens before being parents or anything else. You know? So you have to make sure you no know, you're you're a parent, a citizen. You know? So don't let anybody uh, give you something to discourage you, preach anything to you to make you feel bad, because the Lord God have you in the palm of his hands. Even when it seems as though Things are not headed your way, believe it or not. Always, if there's nothing else for you to be rejoicing about, wake up and dance before the Lord. Thank you, God, that I'm on my way to heaven and not hell. Because there are some people who got everything that their little hearts ever desired. Lived pampered lives. Had billions of dollars, mansions in every country if they wanted to. Then at the end, they are in hell picking worms from their body and in a fire that will never quench. And it gets worse for them. They're going into the lake, a bigger lake of fire. So hell and them will be dumped into the lake of fire. So it gets worse for them for all of eternity. So encourage yourself. Know that you have an anchor. The man Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, the Son of God. And he, he swore, he said, he will never leave us, he will never forsake us. So, don't be, uh, don't be without hope at this time. Amen? Or at any time for that matter. What are we supposed to do in this time? The Bible tells us. It says, having done all, we are to stand. Having done all, stand. You know? So, now, if you've prayed and you've committed everything to the Lord, don't go reading the news and go read, letting the news discourage you, letting other people discourage you. Just have your faith in God because really when push comes to shove, when it, like I said, when the dust is all settled, only God's will will be done. Because the Lord Jesus said it and John the Baptist said it also. He said a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. So 
the, your job is to pray, and then after you have prayed, it says to stand. It says because then it tells us in Hebrews chapter ten verse thirty nine. It says we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So we we believe till the very end. That's why the Bible says that he that endureth till the end will be saved. So you can endure now and then fall away. You know, I remember when somebody that I knew uh, who was part of a, a, an evangelism group that I, I was a member of or a part of went somewhere and uh, took a gun and killed themselves. And I had actually, I looked up to this guy because if there was anybody that knew scriptures, he can recite and you just ask him where scripture is in the Bible. He will tell you the book and the verse. And he lived his life and he, for 25 years. Every single day he led people to the Lord. Every single day for the past 25 years before his, uh, he took his life. He led when he was uh, preaching. He led the entire Georgia uh, football team in UGA to the Lord. Georgia Tech. He, he, he goes to school and he leads entire uh, football teams to the Lord. But what, what happened? We all, I mean, he had the thing on his uh, wall where he checks off how many people get saved every day. And when I looked at his life, I, and I he looked at mine, and I go like, Lord, it looks like I'm not doing anything. This person is really on fire for you. Then from nowhere, just went somewhere and took a gun and killed himself. That he wanted to go be with the Lord sooner than later. And which is wrong. Because once you kill yourself, the Lord will not let you into his heaven. You know? So... But I remember the, the purpose of the story was that before he killed himself, he had gone and bought Bibles and tracts and stuff and uh, gave instruction for it to be distributed among us because we are an evangelism group. And I remember them trying to give me three boxes of uh, Bibles that he had ordered because he took all his money out and other Bibles. And the Lord said, do not receive that. And I was shocked. Bibles and tracts. I mean, I'm, I believe in going out. I was on fire for the Lord. And I was like, Lord, what do you mean? Don't, re don't receive the, the boxes of Bible. He said, don't receive them. Don't, don't take anything. I said, why? He said, because that is an inheritance from a ministry that was aborted. He said, it was an aborted ministry. Do not receive the spirit of abortion with it. You know, and so everybody thought I was like crazy when I uh, when they tried to give me three boxes of Bibles, and <laughs> a box was like oh, a hundred Bibles. You know, but I couldn't take it because it was aborted. He cut his own life short, and the Lord was in place with it. You know, so you have to endure to the end. That's what the Bible says. It says, "He that endureth to the end shall be saved." You know, so you can be on fire for the Lord now. You have to be on fire for the Lord till he comes. You can't let your fire die out. You can't, you can't fall away. You can't let anybody snatch your salvation. That's why uh, remember Paul told Timothy, say, hold on to the things that you have heard, lest you let them slip. You know, so don't let your salvation slip between your fingers, you know. So, and the Bible says, don't suffer from hope deferred. You see, because hope deferred makes the heart sick. You should have hope now. No, I'm going to have hope tomorrow. Your hope, if you're born again, you have the Lord Jesus Christ dwells in you. The Lord Jesus is our hope. So do not defer your hope and let it make you sick, according to uh, Proverbs 13, 12. No, have your hope with you at all times, you know. And I like what the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. 
It says, comfort, ye, comfort yourself with the word of the Lord. It said, uh, read it. Sorry. That wasn't it. This is it. It says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because of the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself. And the scripture that I, I was trying to quote prematurely was uh, Isaiah 40, chapter 1, that says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, say your God. Comfort ye, comfort ye. In other words, comfort yourself, comfort yourself. God says for us to comfort ourselves, you know, and learn from David because he, I mean, in the midst of everything, if you remember the story of Ziglag, when they came and took his wives and their children, and all the people that were with him, and everybody was crying for their wives and their children, and they were like, okay, David, you got us into this. We're going to stone you. You're responsible. In the midst of all that, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. So learn to encourage yourself, because you might not have another person to encourage you. You might be standing alone now, but know that you're not alone, because the Lord said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen? Any questions?